everyone, welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast. Got to shout out all the sponsors. Got to shout out the team behind the lens. We got King Said on the boards. We got D.E.O. Got to give a big shout out to HB Farms, hooking us up with that product. And uh, today we got another special guest, another Bay Area legend, someone that's been putting in work for a long time. You can keep that too, bro. That's for you. Someone that's been putting in work for a long time, someone that's stayed on the grind, someone that's not only putting himself on, but putting other people on. A lot of accolades in the rap game, a lot of projects, long history, and he's still on the run. Represented Oakland, California. Some might say the king of Oakland. And of course, I'm talking about the one and only Filthy Rich. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Of course, bro. Thank you for making this happen. Yeah, yeah. Like what you're doing. Appreciate that, man. Likewise. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, um, like I said, you've been in the game for a long time now. Yeah, like over 15. Over 15. Yeah. Since the early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. Started rapping like, uh, was trying to start rapping like 2006 um, after I had my second son um, in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, trying to transition from the block to rapping. Yeah. You got what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a couple hiccups here and there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think they're my last um, stint, like jail time. I like, uh, came home in uh, 2010, uh, 4 July 2010. Yeah. And uh, you got a new documentary out right now, The yeah. King of Oakland. Yeah, episode two dropped today. And that is showing the some of your some of your recent issues with the court. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it was supposed to be called Federal Indictment at first because that was the name of the album. But because we didn't release it uh, on time, uh, and the next album that came out was King Oakland, so we just switched it over. Right. Yeah, but it, originally, the documentary was supposed to be called Federal Indictment at first. Yeah, check some of it out today. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like you're really intentional about showing a lot about who you are and what you're going through. And- yeah, I really believe, like, that helped me a lot in the beginning, like, fan-wise, like, the vlogs and the, because, like, you know, the people seeing you as a person, you know, that's more relatable than just the music because, you know, you just put a song on and rap and then it'd be done. Mm-hmm. Like, with the with the vlogs or whatever, it's like, okay, um, you know, we can see, like, he really a cool person. Yeah. He really in the hood. He really um, giving back. He really... You know, funny. You know what I'm saying? They can relate to it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that that helped me a lot. Like I got like vlogs with like half a million views on them and stuff like that. Like like they was used to be asking me for for like a certain vlog. Like back in there, time they seen me. Like you know, what I'm saying I used to do vlogs for like every album I did. You know what I'm saying? Just cause like just give the people like you know behind the scenes of what's what all comes into with rap, not just rapping. You know, it could be being a family man. It could be, you know, in your hood doing community service. It could be in the studio. It's it's, lo- it's a lot outside of rapping, you know, and rapping takes a lot away from, you know, everyday life. Yeah, and it's really your personality yeah. that and your brand that yeah. sells the records these yeah. days. So that helped me a lot, like, yeah. as in fan base-wise. Like the vlogs, I used to do vlogs for, like, every album. Yeah. And it's, you know, just showing, like, me being on the road, promoting songs, and also, like, giving to up-and-coming rappers, like, uh, you know, showing them how it's done. You get what I'm saying? Like, all the stuff that I'm doing behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of, like, the DVD era in the early 2000s. Yeah. yeah. Trill TV. Yeah. And some of these other DVDs that Cass was putting out. E-40 had, like, the Charlie Hustle DVD. Yeah. Like, just see behind the scenes of what yeah. they talk about in the mm-hmm. music. So that's mm-hmm. dope. Uh, after this long in the rap game, because I remember like when you started, mm-hmm. it was like mixtapes. Yeah, I dropped my first tape, I believe, 08 though. Yeah. Um, DJ Fresh, My Block, Welcome to Sim City. Right. Yeah, that was my first tape. And then my first album came out in 09, Funk or Die. It kind of took you a while to like break out of the yeah. circuit a little bit. Uh-huh. And... Um, You've been hella consistent since then. Yeah, once I got the formula down, mm-hmm. then I, you know, I just uh, ran with it. So I just, you know, it's the independent grind. 
Yeah. You got to get out there and get in their face. You know, I didn't come from doing open mics, free shows, passing out flyers, hanging out my own posters. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, when I jumped in it, you know, like I, I having legal trouble back then, you know, coming off the block types. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, rap got to be funded. So, you got to, you know, videos got to be paid for, studio time got to be paid for, but just coming off the block, you know, and things happen. Anything can happen on the block, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I used to plan out my, like, like the things I wanted to do. I used to have, like, a calendar. Mm-hmm. And, like, every week I'd like, something to do, like, press up some CDs this week, press up some flyers next week, shoot a video, like, and then, like, so I, I moved at my own pace, though. Yeah, man. Like a lot of people want to like want it all done overnight. Like, no. yeah. So I like Friday I do this. Next Friday I do this like that. And that's that's how I went about with my you know my career. Looking back at, uh, over ten years now, how does it feel seeing how far you've you've come? Um, it's a good feeling for sure. Uh, you know, I didn't when I first started rapping. I didn't think I would. You know, I didn't jump in just to rap forever. But I didn't think that would. Came this far, but even though I feel like it could be even bigger and farther, there's always something, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like not that I've done enough. I mean, not that I've done everything, but I've done enough. Well, you run a professional campaign. Yeah. Everything is high quality. Yeah. Everything is promoted. Yeah. It's like you're saying when you come from having to pass out flyers, put mm-hmm. up posters, yeah. get on a mic wherever yeah. you can. In the digital era, I talk to a lot of artists that had digital fame. Yeah. They posted a video, it blew up, they yeah. had a career. Yeah. But that don't last forever. No, it don't because when the next person after that comes, they forget about the other one. Exactly. So like coming from the era with me with the actual like selling CDs on iTunes and they downloading them for ten ninety nine and you actually getting paid for them or taking CDs to dimples and they cashing you out for five thousand copies or or rasputin, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a more of a solidified core fan base. You get what I'm saying? To where, like, I really never had, like, no big breakout records on the radio or whatever, but I can get paid from 10 to 15 to 20,000 a show and get on stage for 60, 60 minutes and and no word for word. So that's a good feeling, you know? In this era, what, what's your, what's the hustle all about? How, what's the keys to success for artists to had that same type of independent grind, but in a digital format. I mean, I feel like it's still the worth at it. You know, you don't, you never know what's gonna take off. Like, I feel like I'd have had some good records. That I feel like that could have been bigger, but and then I had some records. I just and then those were bigger. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. So, I, me, I just record and whatever I record, I put out. Like, I don't do a hundred records and then. Pick 15 out the 85, out the 100, and got 85 left over, and then wait 90 days and put the rest of them out because if you keep doing that, those records will get old. So if I do an album, I'm giving you right there what I got. Like, like when I drop an album, like that's like if I do 12 songs, I'm giving you those 12 songs. Mm-hmm. Like, and I move, then when I do the next one, that's how I do it. So it's like, like, because just think about it, you got 100 songs and you give them 15 songs. The next 90 to six months, 90 days to six months, you drop another album. You're going to be recording in that time. So, like, in your head, those new songs that you record, and you're going to put them out faster than the old ones. So, like, those old ones, like you overworking yourself because you don't want to even give it to them after that, after you do some new songs. You know what I'm saying? So, you yeah. got you to gotta work smarter, not harder. Consistency mm-hmm. goes a long way right now. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody, we want to take a quick break from the episode to remind you about Stem Social's Five Mushroom Complex. You probably heard me talk about these supplements before, and that's because they actually have a ton of benefits. Stem Social's Five Mushroom Complex is made from lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, reishi, and turkey tail mushrooms. These supplements can help lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar, and boost your immune system and energy levels. If you've got loved ones who are getting up there in age, This might be the perfect addition to their vitamin regimen. Or if you're looking for a boost in your own routine, check out Stem Social's 5 Mushroom Complex. You can visit stemsocial.io or go to the links in the description. 
The History of the Bay podcast is sponsored by TPP in partnership with Lost Soul Courier Collective. These days, you never know who might be at risk of an overdose. Let's get rid of the stigma around this subject and start being honest about the impact it's having on our community. You can prevent overdoses by carrying Narcan. It could save lives, maybe even your own life. If you are in need of Narcan, you can get free delivery in San Francisco by calling or texting 415-275-1922. For more information, contact Tracy H415 on Instagram or visit lawsoulcouriercollective.org. You can also get the links in the description of this episode. Well, I, this is the history of the base, so I like to go back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. And you've talked about it a lot, mm-hmm. but never know. Some people might not be familiar with mm-hmm. East Oakland mm-hmm. Seminary. Mm-hmm. Um, born and raised there. Mm-hmm. Um, for someone who's never been to that side of Oakland, how mm-hmm. would you describe it? Um, shit. I mean, I hate to say it's the normal, but like I've been in a lot of neighborhoods everywhere. You get what I'm saying? Like, I've been in Oakland all my life, bro. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, once you go to hood in Chicago, you get what I'm saying? Or Atlanta, New York, you get what I'm saying? And then it's like, so many things are relatable. So it's like, damn, it's like, it's like this here too. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, but at one point it's like, Growing up, you don't really see nothing past that until you start moving around and seeing things. And then once you start seeing things, I'm, I feel like that makes you want more or better because if not, you're just like accustomed to what you have. So it's like, you might not even know about like <laughs> like Jamaica, you get what I'm saying? Until you go there, you get what I'm saying? You might, you might just be stuck on East Oakland, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, I just feel like People need to see the world. It's bigger and better things in the world. You get what I'm saying? That'll give you a, that'll broaden your horizon on rapping. You get what I'm saying? Different topics. I really feel like after I like branched out from Oakland, like my fan base, my core fan base there kind of didn't grow with me because I started talking about things that wasn't in Oakland. So it's like, oh, he acting funny now. You get what I'm saying? Like, or he changed up, or he different. Yeah, because it's but not the norm. It, yeah, because it's not what the people that's here seeing. Yeah. Like, you got to think about it. Like, it's like, and I know foreign dealerships in Oakland. It's not, you know, <laughs> designer stores. It's not, no. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, once I go over here and, and I come back here and I rap about it, and they're like, what is he talking about? It's like sign language to him. So it's like, but then, it's like, you want me to, stay over here and keep rapping about the same thing and standing on the block and to make you happy. Like, oh, he a, oh, he a real dude. He's still outside after 10 years of rapping. Yeah. He's still on the block. You know what I'm saying? Or still wearing the same thing or looking the same way. Like, everything changed. Like, everything changed from $100 bills changed. You know what I'm saying? Everything changed. So it's like, I feel like you have to change. You have to grow. Absolutely. Uh, that was another thing I was going to mention, too. Like, when I first... Carl, when do you rapping uh, compared to now? I feel like maybe it was intentional for you, but like your lyrical content yeah. and your rapping style seem to progress a lot. Of course, too. of course. That's just like riding a bike. You know, start off on training wheels. Right. And then once, as more as you stay at it, then you're going to be in wheelies. Mm-hmm. So that's just what anything you're doing. Like, like if you go take your driver's test, you know what I'm saying? Like the paper written test. You might fail a couple times till you keep studying the book. Then you're going to pass. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I never said I was the best rapper. I never really cared about that. You know what I'm saying? I got to where I was at by outworking the best rappers. Yeah, there you, you know? go. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like you're actually a student of mm-hmm. the game. For sure. I pay attention to everything, bro. Like, like when I used to do albums and stuff like that, I didn't kind of, like, pay attention to, like, I came from the independent grind, but I didn't pay attention to where, like, I wanted my sound or my albums to be like that. I I studied the majors also because that's where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. 
So I would like pay attention to like the major rappers, like, you know, like the feature wise, the artwork wise, the videos wise, stuff like that, because that's where I wanted to be. I didn't want to stay here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I always had that, you know, that mindset. But I do hear like a lot of influence in your music. Like I feel like Bay Area music, specifically Oakland music, yeah. is important to you. For sure. Yeah, no, no, I'm not saying the influence. I was for sure influenced yeah, by yeah. a lot of Oakland rappers I've seen growing up. I was but I'm ask, saying, I'm um, saying as in, like, when I start becoming, like, you know, a pillar in it, like, I, because I wanted to go to the next level. So yeah. I studied the people that was on the next level. No, I, I, can, I can hear that in, mm-hmm. in, your, in your progression. But in the very beginning, like, who were some of the local rappers that were uh, most influential? Keek, yuck. Um, delinquents, uh, short, um, you know, shit like that. That a lot of them I used to see around. You know what I'm saying? Richie Rich. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like that's what I fuck with. I used to be around Jack a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, but like that's be like once I started rapping. But I'm talking about before rapping. Like I used to see them around a lot. You know what I'm saying? Plus they like. Represent East Oakland, so they always like put some type of pride into me to where like I gotta represent this shit right. Yeah, yeah. No, I relate to that just because uh, I grew up seeing Selsky and Fote mm-hmm. right around Frisco, mm-hmm. and that's something different about Bay Area rap. Yeah, that you can actually see some of these guys out and about in the places that they're rapping about. Mm-hmm. And another thing I noticed about you um, is that it's very important to give back to your neighborhood. Of course. It's, uh, let me ask you this, bro. There's this thing where, like, people say it's, like, in a sense, it's dangerous Mm -hmm. to stay in the same place, to go back to the neighborhood. Yeah. But But staying and going back is something different. Okay, break that down. I don't live on seminary right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You won't see me unless I want to be seen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that accessible. Everybody don't have my phone number. Everybody don't have my address. You know what I'm saying? So... When I do something, it's when I want to do it. So I'm going to move appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Every time I get up and come back to the bay, it's at least five to ten Gs. You know what I'm saying? If you outfit, flights, room, driver, security. You know what I'm saying? Might be more. Depends on the event if I'm giving back. You know what I'm saying? So at the same time, it's like, you know, I know what I signed up for, so I can't complain about it or cry about it, but I'm not just hanging out on the block unnecessary doing, you know, just being seen to be seen or, you know, I don't, I don't sell drugs no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, that's pointless. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, what am I outside for? Like, yeah. I come back when I need to come back and go back to my everyday life. You know what I'm saying? And whenever I do pop up, I'm like, I don't have any issues. I don't, problems or whatever, like, they would make it want to look like. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing charity events for years with no problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, that they don't help publicize or anything. Like, probably, like, over nine years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From turkey drives to backpack giveaways to FOD Christmas to Mother's Day to back to school, you name it. You know, celebrity basketball games. You know what I'm saying? So even the hood days, the hood days, like, even though, you know, it's representing our hood, like, I'm out there passing out flat screen TVs and... Um, scooters and um, skateboards and Dre beats and stuff like that to the kids, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, when I was out there, I would have loved to see that growing up. So that's what made me, like, okay. I watched movies and stuff like that and, 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 and took from the big drug dealers in their hood, and they always showed love to the kids. Like, even if it was giving them $20 or bikes or whatever. So I'm like, man, this is what I want to do. Yeah. You know? So So that's what, like, installed that into me. That's sick. Um, when you say like they don't talk about it, do you feel like uh, law enforcement has put a target on you? Of course, coming from my neighborhood, coming from where I came from, being successful, you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but I wasn't talking about the law enforcement. I'm talking about like publicized, like news or whatever. It's like gotcha. that, but I don't do it for that, so I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, like, it's so much stuff that I do on a daily basis for people. I don't post or don't talk about, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't do it for that. But, but I'm just saying, when you do publicize the negative, 
through the positive also. Oh, I see. Yeah, so don't Drama, just yeah, don't, yeah, don't just do that without doing that. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Now, Problems yeah, with yeah, other yeah, rappers, yeah, all that. Yeah, so, all that yeah, shit. so do both. You feel yeah. me? Don't be biased. I asked about the cops specifically because yeah. I feel like they have tried to smudge your name in the past, right? Uh, really not smudge your name. Like smudge your name is like, like I would say like, like putting a jacket on you or whatever, like in a bad way, like mm-hmm. as in like, you know, snitching or telling something like that. I was like putting smut on you, but I feel like they, you know, maybe over exaggerate. You know what I'm saying, or drag it, or you know, something like that. But um, you know, I mean, it is what it is, like. Due to the fact of who I am, where I came from, you know, made it out. Um, even it could be the people that I associate with, associate with, or know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be anything. You know what I'm saying? They, have, they made it difficult for you to do shows and shit. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. I was banned from doing shows in Oakland since like 2008. Still to this day? No, not to this day. Okay. Uh, when did I start back performing? I don't know. It might have been 10 years, maybe like 18. It's fucked up, though, because yeah. you're actually a pretty positive individual, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, they, I, I don't know, like, because they used to, um, I used to have a manager, and they used to tell him, like, we want to sit down and have a conversation with him. And, and I was like, that's not going to work for me due to the fact right. that, you know what I'm saying, that how that'll make me look. Mm-hmm. So I think that I was like, that might hurt me more than anything. You know what I'm saying? So I just didn't do it. I just took it on the chin. Like, I just ain't going to do the shows. Yeah. And then eventually they just let up, like, you know, start seeing, I guess they start seeing, like, some of the things I was doing. There you go. And it was cool. But they used to be asking for, like, 10 Gs, like, to, like, secure the events and stuff like that. Damn. That's, like, fucking, yeah. that's, like, extortion. You know, if cops, like is, the cops is the biggest game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, man, he gonna bring out all the drug dealers and all the robbers and the killers in the city, and he's high risk, and... He's this and he's that, you know what I'm saying? And this is what the club owners used to tell me. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I'm like, nah, it, it ain't that. It's just that, you know, whoever do come that I rap to, like, you know, they might be somebody and, and don't want to just give their life away, you know what I'm saying? Want to make it back home to their kids. So I'm not just rapping to, like, I don't really rap. Like, I rap, you know, you know I rap too, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Niggas that's getting some money, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like, I got the, you know, where I came from, the struggle and shit like that too. But, you know, I, I like to, you know, I like to have nice things. Sure. Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Well, to go back to the timeline, so you're growing up in East Oakland. Mm-hmm. You're being influenced by the local music yeah. and, and the surroundings. Yeah. And you mentioned that you went from the block to the rapping. Mm-hmm. What made you want to make that transition? Um, to be real, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, me and my niggas, we used to just sit in the house and, like, cap on each other. But, like, we will take a song and, like, reword it and, like, cap on you with it. Like, like, like switch up the words, so like that. But, like, I was always into music, though. Like, we used to always listen to music, you know? We used to always go to, like, um, house parties and shit like that or whatever, so... That was the rhythm and, like, you know, the, I always had to look, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always was a nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? So high school, always had bitches and shit on the block, always had bitches, you know what I'm saying? Always, I, I had jury and shit before, rapping and shit like that, cars and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just, you know, people would be like, hey, bro, you need to rap. Like, you're like, you're a rapper. You had your style. Yeah, I already had all that there. Yeah, I just had to put one with two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't really know what gave me the... Say rap, and I just was like, man, I want to do something. I actually was like, I picked up like homicide, and they was like telling me like I didn't change my life or whatever. So I was just like, man, I didn't do something, and I, I don't know what made me pick rap, but you know what I'm saying? I could have picked anything, but I'm happy I did. You got picked up for that case, and you ended up beating it. No, it wasn't a case for me. I was placed on the scene when the uh, murder oh, happened. Investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was coming out of my house on seminary, walking my dog, and uh. They pulled up on me and took me to homicide, and uh, you know, I was just trying to get some information from me or whatever. And I didn't give them anything, so they just ended up, ended up letting me go, or whatever. But uh, the person that ended up getting killed uh, before he had got killed, uh, the police had like um, confiscated uh, uh, some drugs from him. So uh, after he got killed, and I didn't give them the information on who killed him, they ended up charging me for the drugs. 
Somebody got killed. Yeah. Drugs was found on that person. No. The drugs was confiscated before he got killed. Oh. Uh, and then when he got killed, they they charged me for the drugs. That's and I didn't even know. Damn. Yeah. Because they was watching. They was watching the hood. They was uh, watching the block. Like, like seminary in Foothill is just so open. So, like, it was just so... I remember I caught a case, like, it got ended up getting dropped, but I caught a case for, like, somebody pulled up at the club, and there's a big club on the block called the Vintage Inn. Like, let me get change for a hundred. They gave him change for a hundred. They watching, though, with, like, binoculars and shit, and he drive off. They go down the street, pick him up, come back and pick me up, and try to get me for possession of sales because they grabbed him and he had drugs on him. Man. I didn't even know who the dude was. Never yeah. met him a day in my wow. life, but because he wanted to change for honey, they watched me give him change for honey. It was like player one, player two. So they they grabbed him like on Hayes, like seminary Hayes, and I was walking from Foothill to like, I made to like phones like trash, and they pulled up on me from like Bancroft. And they tried to charge me with like a heroin, heroin sales to him until he was like, like he had to take his choice. Told him like I ain't had nothing. Like I basically told him I didn't have nothing to do with that, whatever type of shit. And but yeah, he had got caught with heroin on him. They tried to charge me for it. That's some bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of you're getting signs that this is mm-hmm. possibly not going to end very well. Mm-hmm. This shit is very hot. Yeah. And uh, it's time to do something different. For sure. For sure. Wow. Do you think that um, that type of surveillance and shit that you were under led to? What I was talking about earlier with the police having a like a grudge against you. Of course, you know all that shit was documented. Whatever mm-hmm. I was on, I've been on all type of probations from misdemeanor probation, drug diversion probation. Um, then it went to like three year felony probation. And it was like um, next would be five, then then to the pen. You get what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm sure all that shit. Like even when I call my fed case, they brought up all that shit. Like. That shit is there. Like, you know what I'm saying? For my first case at 11 years old, was, like, brought up. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's just fucked up when a guy's trying to do something positive yeah, yeah. and change his life, and yeah. they're not supporting that. You know? Yeah, but, you know, like I said, that's just the bias part of promoting negativity without promoting the, the good also, the positive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So once you get into, once you decide to start rapping, mm-hmm. how soon did uh, Livewire come into the picture? Um, It was very soon. Like immediately. Immediately. Yeah. It was like immediately. Uh I had jumped on a plane one day with Keek. And uh Stalin was on the plane. Oh yeah, he mentioned the story. Yeah. And then I think he ended up getting kicked off the plane for he a said bad both ticket. Y'all got bo- no, I, no, I didn't. He did though. <laughs> okay. He said yeah, both they, y'all. Gra- they grabbed him off the plane. <laughs> but we had um he was like, yeah, bro, I be hearing your name, bro. Let's fuck with it. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. And uh, at the time, it was him and that was reaching out to me. And then it was also Be The Weeder from PTB, which was like kind of like the same thing as Live Wire. It was all on the same family. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Stalin was pulling up on me on the block. Like, you know what I'm saying? We was doing photo shoots. Uh, he took my album, put it on his own, because he had a post, like a poster, like put all the upcoming uh, Live Wire albums coming soon and shit. Like, fuck when we put, like, put my song Thunderdome on his compilation album. So it was love, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, fuck it, let's, let's rock, let's, let's so push he, this shit. He helped make it real for you. He yeah, showed you yeah, the business, yeah, yeah, yeah. promotion. Yeah, all that. Yeah, I mean, he he taught me one thing that I, you feel me, that helped me for, like, in my rap career, like, forever. Like, I could forever be grateful to where I can eat. Like, he taught me how to record myself, you know what I'm saying, at his house. So... I'm there. I know how to record myself to this day. Like, somebody right. call, like, you know, you know how hard it is to get in the studio? Like, if you don't got a studio, like, man, you got to book time. Might be booked up. You got to pay, all that shit. So, I got a studio in the crib to where a nigga call right now. I'd be like, man, I got 10 Gs for a verse. I can go get Knock it. But it I lost, I, but I learned that yeah. from being with him. You know what I'm saying? So He's definitely a hustler. Yeah, and for sure. He, he definitely got a lot of game. And, and Livewire pushed the hard yeah, line. because when I met him, he was already dropping albums. And, and um, he... Was this was after Richie Rich and DJ Daryl or whatever? He was doing this thing with the mechanics and Demolition Man or whatever. So he was already doing this thing, just trying to build his label roster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you have FOD. Mm-hmm. Um, did you, and and what I when I talked to Stalin, it was a lot of him like really wanting to put other people on for sure. And so did you take? 
Is that kind of like the same approach you take to your label now? Of course, yeah. You know, like I said, um, I don't know if he planned on still rapping, whatever, but, you know, you... Like, you you come to a point where you're like, man, you know, I want to... You know, it's kind of like giving back at the same time. Like, I want to put niggas in position. I don't want to be the only one shining or rapping or doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? I want to build my label, whatever. I did it because I kind of wanted to fall back. When I first did it, I didn't do it because of that reason. I did it because it was some young niggas in my hood and was like, bro, we want to rap. And I just started putting them together. That didn't work well. A couple of them went to jail. This, this, and this, whatever. And then, like, I kind of, like, fell back from it. And then, like, when I just started being around certain individuals that was taking it serious, and I'm like, okay, cool, now I could do it. You know what I'm saying? Because not that they didn't take it serious in the beginning. Like I said, we coming fresh off the block. You know, you know, like the first four artists I had, they was from my neighborhood, just youngsters, though. You know what I'm saying? My brother, it was one. He ended up getting locked up. Um, the other one getting locked up. So it's just like it was, you know, not that they wasn't serious. It was like the things that came with it. Circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but you, when you're dealing with these artists, uh, I, I feel like uh, you're trying to do everything very legit and yeah. like real business. Of course, you got to because um, it comes back down to the to the police. You get what I'm saying? Like, I done had people tell me like the police asked them like, um, "What you had to do to get that 4D chain?" Like, God damn. type shit like that. You get what I'm saying? So, like, with my artists, like we all got contracts. You know what I'm saying? So it's all legit. You know what I'm saying? You're teaching them that the importance. Yeah, like, yeah, let's get this on paper. Yeah, we have to. Official. We this have is to. how this works. Yeah, we have to because that's just, you know, I, I pay attention to how they build cases and Ricos and stuff like that. Yeah, and like that. So it's like, oh, I want to go that route. Yeah, I want to get white. Yeah, 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 I want to go that route. So let me do it correctly. Wow. Yeah. Fucking, it's a lot of harassment, bro. I mean, that's. That, I mean, at the time being, I'm not even going to say that it's OPD, but at the time being, I, I believe the head, the head of the, I don't know, it was the police department, sheriff, whatever, like, came from L.A. And they was looking at everything as gang-related. Oh. Yeah, so that's how they was pushing it. Like, they was looking at everything as, like, gang-related, like, type shit, so. Probably looking at you as, like, a big headline that yeah, you make, too. And then they should, like, like, my young niggas in the hood, they could just, what you do for that chain? Like, they'd tell me that the police asked them that. I'm like, this shit crazy. Like, yeah. damn, you can't just be a rapper and you have a chain? But on the business side, too, like, I feel yeah. like that's important because we're from the yeah. Bay, man. A lot yeah. of shit is done. Handshake, homeboy yeah. business. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I put a lot of niggas in position without asking for anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With no contract. Just wanted to see them shine and be their own boss. But... It's a difference between someone coming to you and be like, hey, I want to be a part of this. And then you invest and you coming out your pocket and yeah. taking a chance and all that. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's do it the right way. You know, instead of me just saying, hey, I want a person that just being around you and following your footsteps and want to do their own thing and me just giving out game and lending a helping hand is something totally different. Right. So when you're putting money up, you mm -hmm. got to keep track of all that. You got it. I mean, it has to be documented of yeah. what it is. Like right. this is what this is what's going on. This is my artist. This is the advancement. This is the marketing. This is um, this is how many albums. This is all that. Like this has to be. You know what I'm saying? Just because of how things are, are ran in the music industry. Well, it's also like sends a message to the guys on your team. Like, hey, you actually got to work for this. Of course, right. of course, they they all know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't even sign them if they wasn't trying to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what's, what's the point of that? Like, I can't want this more than you want it. Well, I think we all know rappers who just like having people around them to tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. You know like I, mean? I tell my niggas, I ain't your nigga if I can't tell you when you're wrong. Yeah. Like, if we can't have a constructive criticism and I let you know, like, hey, like, you slacking, hey, like, and me too, like, yeah. I'm able to take that. Like, I'm able to admit when I'm wrong. I'm able to be a grown-ass man. Like, I ask niggas, like, bro, was I wrong? You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, like, too big-headed or nothing like that. Like, bro, let me yeah. know if I was wrong so I can, you know, fix the problem or even, you know, admit to it. You get what I'm saying? So I can, you know, learn from my mistakes. Well, a leader still has to follow sometimes. Yeah, for sure. A general one, still at, has to be a soldier. I mean, every boss was a worker. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
Yeah, when I listen to like your music and some of the stuff you're putting out, I feel like you're really big on pushing that yeah. work ethic. Yeah, for sure. That's where I got to where I am. That's all I know. I don't know how to tell you to go get in the studio and make an overnight hit successful and be successful. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I did. I don't know how to... T- I can't tell you to go get on SoundCloud and... Uh, like the, the new rappers or whatever, and if it happens, it happens. That's yeah. not what happened for me, but I can teach you how to grind, teach you how to become a household name, teach you how to, you feel me, um, get on this road. Like, like Jack used to tell me, like, like, bro, just pull up, like, to my shows. I mean, we used to piggyback off shit to where he might have a show. I pull up the promoter when to book me now, because now he could see me, because back then it's like you had to really know somebody to contact you to get booked. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is before the... MySpace came out and Twitter and all that type shit. You get what I'm saying? Now it's the Instagram. You could DM somebody and they can read it right there. So, like, you really had to be, like, I know somebody that's next to him to get him to come do this show. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It was it was that type of shit. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just like, I'm going to just contact them off the internet and book them like that. You yeah, get what I'm saying? So, it, it was, it was a, the grind was different. The grind was different. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, to work a lot. Harder. Mm-hmm. Now it's easier in the sense of like it's all on your phone. But mm-hmm. uh, have you had to cut a lot of people out of your circle for not being able to live up to those standards? Um, I wouldn't say I had to cut a lot of people off. I say a lot of people cut themselves off, and um, I just let it, you know, let them fall to the side. You know what I'm saying? Really not. I mean, I done been through all type of fake shit with the rap shit, so it's like it surprised me when they don't do it. Like, how could you not take advantage of this? No, no, it surprised me when... Oh, when, when, they, when, when they stick to the script. Well, yeah, it surprised yeah, me yeah, when yeah. they solid. Yeah, yeah, like, I You know what I'm saying? Because, yes. you know, I don't automatically think you're going to be fake or whatever, but I'm so accustomed to it keep happening. And you got to understand also, it's like, when you meet these rappers, you meet them in, 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 in character. You don't meet them like, hey, my name is Woo Whoop, and... In my neighborhood, this and this is this. You meet them in a rapper character. So everything else bad that you find out about them happens down the line, years later, with you dealing with them. Like, their whole resume is not written on their forehead when you meet them and you decide to still fuck with them even though it's bad, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you got to... You gotta fuck with him for a minute for a motherfucker to be like, man, that nigga ain't good. Or yeah. and then you gotta or or you see the signs of him being a certain type of way later on down the line after, you know, a little bit of success. Yes. So it shit just don't happen like that. I'm laughing because bro, filthy, one day I'm gonna do history of the bay exposed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just cause I done seen so much crazy shit yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean it happens, bro. And just yeah. imagine, like, that's what I was saying, like, motherfuckers seeing bigger and better shit. Just imagine how big motherfuckers changing and exposed like in the world like other places that we don't even know about oh yeah you know what I'm saying oh, so yeah. it's, it's always something bigger and better yeah and that's the message I want to put out too for like people who want to get in this game it's yeah. like bro there's a lot of bullshit a lot of bullshit with, there's a lot of crabs in the barrel yeah um, everybody don't want to see you succeed You spend, everybody don't want to see you be successful unless they are part of it yeah. you know what I'm unless they benefit off big it big egos yeah a lot of people you know they um they whatever they that they do is for their own self gain. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like a motherfucker might fuck with you only if they can gain off of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just like you having this podcast. You getting on here and telling the people, your core audience to go watch another podcast, that's will be taken from you. But you would do that if you gain it off of it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of for people sure. not just promoting like, hey, go watch my bro other podcast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless that you get something from it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it don't, it, the favor is not returned. I mean, even with a lot of the guests I deal with, yeah. I'm spending hours talking about your shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, some people come on this pop platform to give. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I have a story to bring you, or yeah. I want to fuck with you, or yeah. whatever, whatever. And that's all love. That's yeah. a mutual thing. Yeah. Some people come on here, or want to come on here yeah. to take. Yeah. Let me get see what I can get out of Off this. Off of it, yeah, yeah, for sure. And those are people I And you know what I cautious. tell my niggas? I'm like, use me, don't abuse me. Yeah. So if you got to say that I'm FOD to get in the club or to get a girl or to get a feature or a beat or whatever, cool. As long as it's like, don't don't put no smut on my name. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. To get what you got to get. fuck with yeah. my reputation. Yeah. yeah, you know, so. Does like, that work to say you're FOD, get some bitches? Shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> I done seen all type of shit happen. You get or heard about all type of shit happening just off that. Just think about like the big record labels, like oh yeah, what, what motherfuckers used to get off. Like I remember I went to Miami and uh, uh, they was trying to sign me in Miami, and uh, I was dealing with the record label, and they was telling me like uh, this guy was on tour with Flowrider, and Flowrider was getting two fifty a show, and was booked every weekend to where he was making like a million dollars a week. I mean, maybe that was a month. I'm sorry. Maybe that was a month. But the people around him were, were benefiting so much to where, like, people like, oh, I got this Rolex, bro. Can you give me next to Flow Rider so I can book him or so That's I can crazy. do this type of shit like yeah. this to where he's coming off tour and he's buying Ferraris yeah. from being on tour with him, making so much money just being around him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that shit worked. Association. Mm hmm Well, going back to the timeline, um, one thing that we talked about on this podcast before is, uh, like, SMC. Mm -hmm. So, Livewire got plugged into that, right? Yeah. Talent Business. Yeah. You were part of that. Yeah. That was your debut album? Yeah. Funk it. We had Shemp on here. Yeah. Who did your cover. Cover work. He did yeah. artwork for Funk or Die, Trippin' for Life, Kill Zone. Like, my f um, first few albums, yeah. Oh, I did, um, did I start messing with him? He did the... Uh, not a, not enough real niggas left with my kids on it. Uh, yeah, a lot of lot of lot of artwork. Hell yeah! Uh, Did SMC like help turn your shit up? I never got paid off SMC. Never got paid. Yeah. Dude, skip town with the money. Yes. Yowzers. Yeah. That's the story of her. Yeah, for sure. So you never got paid for any of them joints. Mm -mm. They took your shit, sold it, distributed, it, and then bounced. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Was that like a setback for you or? Um, I mean, it could have been like a discouragement to my, I don't even want to fuck with this shit. Like, you know what I'm Because that was a big album. Those were big yeah, albums yeah. too. Yeah, those were my, it was just like anybody's first album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I couldn't blame Stretch mm -hmm. because Stretch was the one that put me in the position to, to have that type of distribution. He didn't run off. You get what I'm saying? Like, what was his name? Ralph or something like that? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that he, was the guy who yeah, bounced out. Yeah. Mm. So he shit me, Jack, Burn, Stalin, <laughs> uh, Hood Stars, like <laughs> maybe Quinn, like he was running off from everybody. Yeah. Like some niggas got a few dollars, and then you know, it's like you go to the plug. You might go to the plug right now and go buy ten peas, and they go back and go get front and a hundred and run off. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So it's like, wow. Yeah, but that's what happened with that. Well, Stalin was saying is if he had just... Yeah, we had a group album. We didn't get paid for the Empire. All right. The yeah. Live Wire Empire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's saying if dude just kept letting Will Bronson and everyone else run the label, he probably would have made more money down yeah. the line. Will was cool. Uh-huh. I fucked with Will. Will was cool. But the other guy, I don't really know him, but he's the one who ran off and shit. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you about another album that mm -hmm. came out, I believe, on SMC. Mm -hmm. And it was a group, it was a duo album with you and Messy Mark. Mm -hmm. Was that a collaboration or was that just some songs getting put no, together? No, that was a collaboration. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, they funded that album. Uh, Will, I believe. Well, they funded the album, yeah. Yeah, because um, I also saw footage of, like, you and Juice Messy at, on the, at the yeah, Bars Awards. Yeah, man, I booked Mess before for a show in uh, Fresno at the Fox Theater. Um, this was, like, after all, like, the the drama and shit with the city or whatever, and, yeah, I came back mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I booked them before for a show. Um, I used to throw shows out there uh, at the Fox Theater. So where I, what I do is, uh, me and the hood stars just do it, I believe, and I book a a big artist, and then I charge the um um like open mic like the open Openers. artist, mm -hmm. yeah, and shit like that or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you were y'all were rocking, um, and then it went bad between y'all at some point. Um, I fucked with Mess in the beginning. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I can't sit up here and say that I didn't. As just as a Bay Area legend, you know, rapping wise. You get what I'm saying? Salute that. You get what I'm saying? The city. I fuck with the city, period. Mm -hmm. um, down the line, the shit went bad due to me being let down as a fan because um, I knew the guy um, after the Reno robbery. And um, that's when me and Mess went, went, went bad. 
You get what I'm saying? With the records and all the shit. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how it happened. Yeah, there's a lot of back and forth. Yeah, yeah. This records. Yeah. Um, I knew the guy. I knew the guy who went to jail. I knew the guy who took the shit. Like, me and Juice had the video before it went on World Star. Yeah. We had the video. Like, I could have, like, put it out, like, type shit. Like, we, I had the video in my possession. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? The whole thing. Like, I didn't try to explain But I just was, like, let down more, like, not even mad. Just, like, disappointed. Like, damn. On, how, on the response to all that? No, like, how, how he did, like, the... The, the, the promoter? The, no, him. Like, the oh. report he made and all the shit like that to where I felt like, damn, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought this was this. Oh, I see. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. I spoke on it. I could have shut up and mind my business, but like I said, he let me down as a fan, so I spoke on it. Maybe I jumped out there and shouldn't have said something I said or whatever and mind my business, but, you know, I'm human. Yeah, yeah I think that's valid, and I think you have your right to express yourself mm -hmm. in that case. Um, nothing ever really got serious. Like, rap, it's just rap. Yeah, no, nah, nah, we never, no, nothing went that far. I never seen, seen them or he never seen me or no shit like that. Uh -huh. Well, when I interviewed him mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, while he was still locked up, mm -hmm. he actually spoke highly of you. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been around Mesh plenty of times, mm -hmm. plenty of times, like downtown Oakland, Bars of Wars. Like I said, I booked him for a show in Fresno. Um, that had happened, like the show in the Fresno, because remember, I was like, the, I was like, at one point, the Bay wasn't fucking with him. I had a show with, him, not a show, I had a song with him, me, him, and Mitchie Slick on one of those albums that was on town, and he was supposed to come to Dago and shoot the video. And I shot the video on Mitchie Slick Hood, but he never came. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And this was around the time to where all that shit was going on. And then that's when he had came back, and that's when I had booked him for the show in Fresno. Right. Yeah. Well, is it safe to say that uh, this could be just water under the bridge? Or... Uh, it ain't even no issue. Yeah. It ain't even no smoke. Like, like the previous shit that happened could have been resolved if things... Um, wasn't done how they was done behind my back and the disrespect, like, and that would have led to me and someone else not falling out due to the fact of them handling it, handling the situation a lot better. Yeah, I think it's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm, with my platform, I try to, like, bring stuff like this up yeah. to, uh, in a positive light. For sure. Not to, I see a lot of people do clickbait shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But uh, I think the whole Bay Area wants to see these things. Sometimes it's entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rappers go back and forth. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I was just with some film on niggas shooting dice at my bro party. I'm like, I'm, I'm shooting dice. I'm like, niggas, it's money in film on nigga mess back home. Nigga, you feel me? <laughs> like, this was like like a couple months ago. So, you know, it, it, it was never nothing. I mean, like I said, I, I felt disrespected. I mean, not even disrespected. It's like let down as a fan. Yeah, yeah. When I seen, when I seen, okay, cool. But it's like me and Mess, we ain't had no shoot him up, bang, bang, time smoking. Like that. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, like you have had a, a your fair share of rap. Oh, beef. yeah, for sure. It, it happens. Comes with the territory, right? Yeah, for sure. Especially when you're at the top. Yes. Yeah. Um, at this point in your career, do you feel like you're over the whole back and forth? I've direction? been over it. Yeah. I've been over it, but a lot of times I'd be defending myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't really just... Like, that time, I spoke up. I spoke up out of... You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times when niggas make songs or shit like that, I be... You know what I'm saying? I be counteracting. You got to set the record straight sometimes, right? Yeah, like... Or, or I already know that niggas be having songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they ain't, just ain't put them out yet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like sometimes the best response is no response? Um, I learned that later on. Yeah. I didn't know that in the beginning. Right. But if I knew that in the beginning or I had some OGs or some niggas in the rap game to teach me that in the beginning, I, it probably would have not been any diss songs. You get what I'm saying? None at all. Yeah, because it would have been like somebody, no, nah, man, we ain't doing that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But we didn't have that. Like, a nigga said something, what? And you get what I'm saying? And that's just what it was. We was responding. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I learned that later on that, you know, because even ignoring somebody kills them more than anything. So I know what you're thinking. Yeah. So, so keeping yeah, so, you your know, cards it, hidden. It, it, it comes yeah. with growth. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, but, you know, back then, you know, we young. We just, we rapping. I think the other thing people don't realize is that with the internet, mm -hmm. when you're sending shots to somebody, mm -hmm. you're promoting them. 
In a yeah, way. for sure. Because then they're gonna say, "Oh, why he say that's that?" That's why certain him? rappers. Look him that's why certain rappers. That's why certain rappers don't respond because they know if they respond to someone, they will blow them up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They don't want to see that, so they'll let them rap and talk about them without saying anything else to them. Because then, so if this person rap about me, they're gonna wait for my response. You know what I'm saying? Then if I respond back, they're gonna be waiting for their response. Yeah. So that's how it goes. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's some like it's just shit you gotta learn. Like the rapping shit is like the rapping is ten percent. The business is ninety percent. And once you learn the business part of it, then because like niggas that rap make songs about me now, I won't say nothing. I'm not I'm not about to promote you. I'm not about to give you that clout. I'm not about to give you that motion. You know what I'm saying? You don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. But if I knew that then, you know what I'm saying? I probably would have been. I probably would have went about things a lot different. Yeah, you've had a lot of haters over here. <laughs> man, shout out, man. It come with it. It comes with the yeah, territory. It come with it, bro. Like, you know what they say? Uh, they ain't hating you, ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're going you to get them, too. As you, as you, I'm going to get them. I get them. You know what I'm saying? That's right now. That's right <laughs> now. But I'm saying as you progress, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as you get to a certain level, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you, like, study other... Podcast channels and interviews no, and stuff I'm like that. You, yeah. I get it right no, now. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to like the bigger ones, uh-huh. like, oh man, you might get it from an ex female you used to fuck with, a family member. It, man, I done watched it. Like, man, I done watched cameramans change, producers, <laughs> the same nigga that I used to take care of. Mm-hmm. The same producer I used to take care of, like, was broke, sleeping on my floor, didn't have a bag to put his equipment in. Like, Plastic bag, like from Safeway. I ran to the store and bought him an eight hundred dollar MCM backpack just to put his 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 laptop in and shit. Was a nigga that recorded this song. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. So shit changes. Uh, this song about me. Mm-mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it shit changed, bro. So like, like you know, it it come with the territory. No, I, yeah, I know. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. It's just that my haters are so weak that you haven't seen it. So that's why I just keep doing what I do. But I, that's I the whole point, like, bro. Air. You gotta. You have to understand as a person, everybody's not gonna like you. Yeah. And you have to come to the point to where you have to understand that you're. You if everybody like you, something wrong. Yeah. I don't want real. everybody like yeah. me. I know everybody not gonna like me. Yeah. Due to the fact of your success, because if you was broke or not doing a podcast or not successful, then you would have more people that like you, as yeah. you. Be successful, more people are not gonna like you. But I had to like, understand, like I don't shop where everybody shop, I don't drive where everybody drive, I don't live where everybody live, I don't bank where everybody bank. So it's like, of course they're gonna have a problem with it because what they don't know, they don't like. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, comes with it, bro. Like they yeah, stone, sure. they stone Jesus Christ. Right. So why would they like me? Yeah, if you want everybody to like you, this is the wrong business. Yeah, for to sure. Be. Like you got to have tough skin for this shit. Yeah. Like. You have to, and it's just that's the territory. Mm-hmm. Like, very, like, what what rapper do you know that everybody just like? Like somebody, yeah. somebody yeah. got something against them. Somebody you know just that dislike buddy. Yeah, somebody yeah. got something against them. Like everybody just don't like you. It yeah. might be the best rapper in the world. Every everybody don't like it. Yeah, and they could be like, man, I'm tired of hearing the same shit. You know, it's gonna be something negative, no matter yeah. what. So yeah. Yeah. it comes with it. Like if you ain't ready for hate, you ain't ready for success. Period. That's a good game right there. Um, so just to go jump back into the timeline. Um, so after SMC, mm-hmm. is that when you start pushing your own line uh, independently and you eventually went separate ways from Livewire? Um, no, I was always still Livewire after that. I never had, uh, even though I was Livewire, I did my own thing. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always did my own thing. Oh, okay. We all we all did our own thing, even mm-hmm. though we was just push live wire. Right, right, right. Like Stalin gave us games. Stalin showed us how to push as one, as um, you know, become a brand. And you know, just as much as he was an asset, you know, I was an asset at live wire also. Um, but bro, never like bro ain't pay for no videos or no. Studio time or gotcha. or no or no posters or flyers. Mm-hmm. Brett was fucking with niggas that was hustlers. You get what I'm saying? He wasn't fucking with no niggas to take care of him. He was just you know sharing his platform and showing niggas how to how to do this shit. You get what I'm saying? He wasn't over there. Stalin didn't, didn't actually sign anyone. 
like, on a contract or nothing. Like, this was all off the love, all off the muscle type shit. Like, like we, we fuck with each other. That's my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, right. like, but bro wasn't, <laughs> bro was still rapping himself. So he wasn't, oh, man, I'm paying for your video. I'm setting up your photo shoots. I'm getting your words. He wasn't doing that shit. Mm -hmm. You got to get it how you live. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So was, that's why a lot of niggas was going to jail. You get what I'm saying? Because they was, you know, we got to fend for ourselves. But he was showing you how to get some money. Mm -hmm. It was up to you to get this shit, though. So, but I feel like you started really pushing harder oh, yeah. around that oh, time yeah. period, like, too. Like, my, my buzz, like came from like I would say like like crazy run like like I said I got out in 2010 from like 10 to 16 like like it was crazy you get what I'm saying then after that that's when like the business mind set in like to where I took it to the next level like that's when I started doing all the bigger shit you get what I'm saying but like Bay Area the Bay Area wise from like 10 to 16 I had that shit on lock for sure. And we say bigger shit, like bigger features. Yeah, stepping nationwide. out nationwide. Yeah, step, like it's like okay, I got Traveling. tired of doing the same meet and greets. Yeah, tired of doing the same on the albums, doing the rap about the same shit. Tired of tired of doing the same thing. Like bro, like I gotta step out. You feel me? So I started stepping out, seeing different shit. You get what I'm saying? Like I moved to Vegas in like 2011. Mm, it's been a long time. Now. Yeah, 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 I moved to Vegas in like 2011, but like. Even from 2010 and 2016, I was always having a wanting more and want to do bigger shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, man, it's still, I feel like you're still on. The run. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, I got some I got some music right now. Like, I just recorded, like, I probably got, like, probably four early songs. Like, like I said, when I drop something, I give you everything. Like, I give you everything I got. So if it's, like, 30 songs I got, I'm giving you 30 songs. If yeah. I got 10 songs, I'm giving you 10 songs. Like, I just, like, got back in the studio and, like, within the time of me getting back in the studio, like, four songs. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but even with these four, like, these four is crazy. Like, in my mind, like, they crazy. Like, elevation shit to where it's not like how it was back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... That's what's up, bro. Yeah, that's like, that's so where I'm at with it in life. Still moving, still growing, still evolving, yeah. still got things. It, you it just do. take a lot from to take a lot to inspire me now. Are you still hungry? With the rapping, no. Mm -hmm. But with the industry, yes. So with the rapping, you feel like you checked every box. Yeah, so with not the, every box. It's certain things I haven't done, but I feel like I've done an, done, done enough. enough. Yeah, so it's like, and then I don't want to like just be focused on rapping, knowing I got artists. So that's rapping and I'm rapping. You know what I'm saying? I want to give my undivided attention to them. Yeah, I like what you're doing with that. I feel like that's like uh, damn near some old school bass shit like yeah. Short with the Dangerous Crew, yeah. JT with Get Low, yeah. Master P with No Limit, yeah. uh, Styling with Livewire, but yeah. at a certain point kind of feel like rappers are just making it all about themselves. Yeah. Mac Dre with yeah. this, yeah. putting other artists on yeah. and... Um, it seems like they're getting the buzz, they're getting mm -hmm. out there, and it's yeah. working. Yeah, for sure. We got FOD, we got um, label distribution through Empire. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Uh, just showing them, like, you know, a lot of these artists, when they first start rapping, they rapping over mixtape beats, they not getting songs mastered, they not getting proper artwork, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, like, we working on, we like, we... Getting all that shit out the way first. It's like like artist and development. Professionalism. Yeah, and then like, okay, we can get all this. Are you still hungry about this shit? Because like, I don't want to sign no nigga that I don't want to work tomorrow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't want to even waste my time. Like, you got to, I can't want this shit for you more than you want this shit. I'm where I'm at. I'm good. Now you want to be good. So now you have to do your thing. I'm going to put you in position to do your thing. It's up to you to do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to help as much as I can, but... It's up to you to make these people want to fuck with you. And you got to understand, it's hard to actually, like, make these people want to be a fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you have to do any and everything to win them over. It's not just about rapping. Like, you have to, you have to like, really win. Like, you can go post a flyer right now and say, album out now, somebody still a comment when they drop. <laughs> like, you got to beat this shit into their head. Yeah. You have to beat this shit in. Like, like these niggas think just because you post... The album one time is supposed no. to do a million records. Yeah. Like you gotta like, and then it's harder now because like, so many streams add up to an album sale. 
So it's like, you got to shoot as many videos as you can, part of streaming, you feel me? You got to promote as much as you can, Apple Music, um, SoundCloud, um, Spotify, all, all the streaming services. You got to you gotta fuck with the the influencers on TikTok. In, in, like, you know what I'm saying? This, this is how you have to adapt to the new marketing. Yeah, you got to work these records. Yeah, so it's like, you can't just get an album, drop an album, and post the album out right now and think that the album is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Then be like, oh, man, the label fucked me over. Right. You know, man, no, nigga. <laughs> you ain't even made the label no money to right, fuck you over. Right. You get what I'm saying? So it's like... No, I think I, I see that a lot with the... Not to, to shit on younger artists, but I think a lot of people are too cool to do... They think it's too yeah, thirsty. For sure. no, or, and, and what I realized, like, the young niggas... They don't have the same grind or the same yeah. hustle as, you know, a couple of generations before them that was really, you know, they just think, like, it's supposed to just be like this. Mm -hmm. Or because you feel like your music is the best music in the world, it's supposed to do. And yeah, that's cool. You could be the best artist, but they're not hearing this shit or connecting to this shit, and you're not helping them connect to this shit, or you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then, right. hey, it's just good music that's falling on deaf ears. You can also fake a lot of shit. Streams, followers. Yeah. You know but I mean? that only lasts for so long because yeah. it's like, what's the point of faking it? Like, it's like, I'd rather my shit be, like, it's just like even with the jury. Like, I'd rather have something small and real than something big and fake. So it's like, what's the point of faking it? You, you got to wake up in the morning and remember to, to fake it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. I got to get up and fake it today. <laughs> you got to like, work to fake it. Yeah, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I remember a friend of mine I had, and uh, he wore fake jewelry. And I'm like, bro, we can't be doing this, bro. Like, you got to get you some. You know what I'm saying? He was getting money type shit, but he just wore fake jewelry. And I'm like, bro, why do you do that? And he's like, the bitches don't know. And I was like, but you know. <laughs> I'm like, it ain't. I'm like, but you know, nigga, like, you know, like, you know, right. like, fuck what they don't know. Right. You know, when you put that shit on, that it ain't that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, it was like, one day we was out, and it was like, uh, I don't know if you know my nigga Rich Rail from out here from the city. It was me, Rich Rail. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was a couple other niggas. My nigga Pooh Hev. Uh, I forgot the other guy's name, but bro was with us. And we was in the club, and we was, like, taking pictures of, like, the rollies and shit. This was, like, years ago, though, like, in Vegas, like, years ago. And he tried to throw his watch in, and I tried to be slick, like, watch out, bro, like, watch out. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, watch out, don't do that, like, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, what? I'm like, bro, like, watch out, like, you get what I'm saying? So now you done made a scene to where now these niggas looking, and you looking at me like I'm telling him something wrong, knowing that that shit fake. Right. And it's not that I didn't fuck with him because because of that. Like, I fucked with him because he was a good nigga, but that's what he chose to wear. Like, you feel me? Like, everybody got, like, like everybody not a killer. Everybody not a gangster. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, you choose to fuck with good people. It could be a good nigga. He's an engineer. A good nigga. He's yeah, a man. producer, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, he was a good nigga for sure. Uh, but he tried to put him in the picture. And I was like, nigga, I don't want fake watchbusters <laughs> to grab this and be like, well, all four of those watches real, but that one fake. Right, you feel me? And I'm right. still in the picture. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, like, nigga, like, you get money. I'm watching you get money. Nigga, go buy the shit. <laughs> like, what are you playing for? And that nigga really thought because the bitches didn't know that that meant something. And I'm like, nah, bro, like, you got to do this shit for yourself. Yeah. Like, you feel me? These bitches going to come and go. They come with the lifestyle. You feel me? Like, I might have a show today. Them bitches going to come. And somebody else got a show next week. They going to go to that show too. Yep. So it's like, that's what you, you it's like, you trying to attract them with the fake jury. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you throwing out bait in the water and it's like, the, like the bait is fake. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you worried about that. Like you so intrigued by the bitches it's not knowing. But bro, you know, for your, for your sanity, like, come on, bro, like, you got to get up and put that shit on and know that shit ain't, ain't it. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? your character yeah. goes a long way, man. And uh, I fuck with people that know how to be themselves. Yeah, and I was just trying to tell them, like, bro, don't do it for them. Do it for yourself. Yeah, do it for you. Like, you'll feel better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll feel better as a man. Like, or don't wear it at all. Like, it's, it's pointless then. Like, bitch, let a bitch fuck with you for you. Yeah. Fuck the fake jury. 
Let alone the real Drake. Yeah, if that's what you got to do to get girls, then that's kind of yeah. suspect. Too. Niggas do all type of shit for girls, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas get on his gram. Nigga, post the next nigga money. I Man, I done seen some crazy shit. <laughs> and they come to my crib one day. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, nigga come to the crib one day. I got a pair of red bottoms on the pool table. He just take the shoes and just post them on his Instagram like they was his. Like, like then say, oh, my nigga feel he got some fly ribs. Nothing like, like I said, like, this shit is like on the, on the net. Like, you could be anybody. God damn. You could be anybody. Like, I can come in here, ask all y'all for all y'all money, take a picture, post it. They don't got to filter right. for faking. So it's like, right. you could be, that's why I don't even fuck with it like that. Because, like, you would never know. Like, bitches could, like, make their ass bigger, oh, yeah. their stomach Filters. smaller, their nose. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, you never know till you get catfish. So I don't, like, I just use my shit just for music, bro. I ain't on here for that, bro. Because, like, it's a whole lot of rich, broke niggas, bro. And there's a whole lot of, like, cute, ugly models. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, I'm cool off this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's disappointing to see in the rap game some people are more concerned with the actual image than the actual substance. But But it comes with it because you got to look like something. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a rapper, you got to look like a rapper. Like, let's be real. You got to look like a rapper. It's like a... You got to have a style of some kind. You got to look like a rapper. Like, especially if you're talking about getting some money and all this shit. You got to look like a rapper. So it's like, now if you like J. Cole, then cool. Then you don't have... But it... Kendrick, cool. Like you, if you're not you're not into that, but you're yeah. rapping about that. That's but if you rapping about all this, no, no, you sure. gotta look like that. So yeah. it's like for them to look like that, and they don't have it, but they rapping about it. Let me go buy this fake shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they not gonna know. Right. But it's like in your soul, you know. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't sell your soul for a little bit of fame. And yeah, a little bit of change. And that's the thing, fame. Is like the number one drug right now. I agree. Fame. A lot of niggas cloud. never had it. Like, a lot of, like, a lot like, of dudes was corny yeah, before they like, started rapping. There was nothing, rapping. nobody. So yeah. it's like Instagram give nobody's action to be somebody. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, that's why a lot of niggas be dying on the internet, off the internet, like arguing you my fucking shooting shit because they trying to be so hard and tough. Bro, that's the weirdest shit to me. Yeah, nigga, any nigga, I'm gonna be real with y'all. People any, trying to do any street nigga shit on the, on the internet gram. doing a crime is the police, bro. Yeah. If you doing any type of crime on the internet, bro, I, I don't come from that, bro. Yeah. Like, if you go. doing a, a robbery and you're recording it, shooting a nigga, any type of like, you feel me? Like, you don't, you telling on yourself. Or the whole sliding through to the other neighborhood and taking a selfie. Yeah, all that shit like that. Like, when we was funking with niggas or beefing with niggas, man, like, the nigga knew what was, we didn't tell a nigga our location and showing them all that. Like, we didn't give them, let them know we had to drop on them. This shit, chestnut checkers. Like, like real niggas move in silence. Like, if you're gonna get it done, get it done. You're not about to tell a nigga because even with that, like, you might post that shit, something happened to a nigga like a week later, and then yeah, that shit is that shit. Yeah, that right yeah. there. Because you done told on yourself when you, when, when you could have got away with it. Man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 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 don't my young niggas that's out there doing what they doing, getting their money in the streets, bro. Don't crash at all off this internet, bro. This shit is not what it is. I appreciate bro. you saying that on mm-hmm. this platform, man. Well, shit, bro, this has been an enlightening conversation. For sure. It's been dope sitting down with you. I mm-hmm. uh, hope to have you on here again. For sure. I'm sure any, more we can anytime, talk about. yep. Um, I got the King of Oakland documentary out right now. And even with that, you know, you talk about the haters, you know, oh, man, the King of Oakland. It's not about downplaying nobody. Everybody should carry themselves as a king. You know, females should carry themselves as a queen. Why would I not, you get what I'm saying, uplift myself, you know, to the, highest, to the highest status. And also, king shut a throne. There you go. It's kings from different neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying, that don't rap right. or, or that do rap. That's, you know, elite niggas, you know what I'm saying, boss niggas, real niggas, you know what I'm saying, from from San Francisco, Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, wherever, you know what I'm saying, is is kings everywhere. Not That's just the Bay Area. It's kings around the world, you know what I'm saying, real kings, though. Niggas having billions of dollars, you know what I'm saying, kings of... Dubai type shit, you get what I'm saying? We over here arguing over something, you know, a name that a nigga calling himself because he done, you know, went through some trials and tribulations and carried himself like a king, you get what I'm saying? I could have I could have easily copped out and did some fake shit, you get what I'm saying? 
And it's like, okay, if you're going to be a king, like, if you're going to carry that name, like, know what come with it. You get what I'm saying? Put your niggas in position. Give back. You get what I'm saying? Not just say I'm the king and take. You get what I'm saying? Or or, or just want to be the king for one one reason. Like, you got to have multiple reasons. Like, people got to be able to come to you as to be a leader. Like, when, when shit goes wrong in the kingdom, they're going to come to you for what right. should we do? Right. You get what I'm saying? So you got to be able to guide your people. You get what I'm saying? Your pines, whatever it may be. You get what I'm saying? And not lead them to the water to crash. I don't want my young niggas to crash. I ain't promoting that. Man, get some money. Get out the way. You get what I'm saying? Let them niggas have that shit. Like, like if you still in the streets and, and you, if you ain't nervous out here in the streets, whatever, then you ain't been out here long enough. You get what I'm saying? Like, even with my young niggas, I tell them, like, if you, know, if you having kids or whatever, and your kids back in the streets, and you failed as a father. You get what I'm saying? You supposed to teach them what not to do. You get what I'm saying? I tell my kids all the time, nigga, don't be like me, be better than me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't do what I had to do. I did all this so y'all didn't have to do it. Right. So if you back out here doing it, then where did it, like, how does that work? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's repeating the cycle. So... Speaking of uh, sharing the throne, we know that. Uh, well, I don't know how many people know about it, but it was it was an attempt at a, a live wire reunion tour. Yeah, can you speak to that? And uh, it was for long. Um, that was something Stalin had in order. It was for sure. We had sat down, all had a meeting or whatever. Um, and uh, shit, I'm I'm all aboard. Yeah. Like, I'm all aboard for anything positive. Stalin know that. That's my brother. Me and Stalin ain't never had no issues, no problems, no nothing. We just, you know, we had the 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 um the places we were trying to go to had to be able to accommodate us. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. if anything, that might have been something that stagnated us, but it it was never nobody wasn't on board or nobody wasn't fucking. We had a nice meeting downtown Oakland, you feel me? Sat down, had some drinks, everybody was with it. Uh, me, Stevie, Shady, Blood, Jonah, yeah. um, Styling, everybody, you feel me, was all there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're just trying to make it make sense for everybody, you know, because there's so many of us. It's still a possibility? Anything's possible. Yeah. Anything's possible. A promoter might come call tomorrow with, you feel me, the right bag for everybody, to, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what we was trying to figure out because, you know, when shit like that, you got to, it's like either we going to book them ourselves and bust down the door, or we're gonna have somebody come in and pay us up front. So right. that's like, we like, do we wanna take this or do we wanna do this? Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool, we might gotta sh go to Seattle and do a show. So we go pay for the venue, now we gotta go out there and get the marketing team going. Yeah, the marketing team going and promoting all that shit. So it's all, you know, it's a process. We don't have no major labels. Like a lot of these niggas that be doing tours, the labels do those. You get what I'm saying? Like the labels fund them. They, put them niggas up in rooms and tour buses and all that shit. We coming independent. So everything we do got to be done right. You get what I'm saying? We don't got nobody that's just putting a bag behind us and telling us to go do this and all we got to do is pull up and be there. Like, we we making these plays ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, and that just come from our grind from back in the day. So it's like, we got to make sure, like, it might be a show that might not be able to pay all of us. So how are we able to do it? You get what I'm saying? And, I done took pay cuts before, like, right. for everybody to eat. Uh, yeah, I done went on tour with artists and not get, you know, damn near half of what I get by myself just so I can double back later on and be able to get those venues for myself later on so they can see that nigga sell tickets. Because, like, when you're selling hard tickets, it's different than going to a club. They want to see, okay, can he sell out this, this venue? And once you go, it's like a resume. I went to Santa Cruz and I sold out the Catalyst. They want to see the hard ticket sales. I went to the Fox Theater in Fresno. They want to see the hard ticket sales to where they're like, shit, you're making money here. Let's book him. Like, right. That's when the, the Live Nations and all that shit come into play to where like they get behind you and put you on a tour. They have tour agencies that you can call and they got a whole route for you, but they want to be able to see that you can sell because if not, they just wasting their money, like setting the shit up. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, I think that's game that a lot of young artists in the Bay don't understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, a lot of the shows that I, I used to go rent the motherfuckers out myself. Right, right, right. You get what I'm saying? And and do it all myself and get the bag. You get what I'm saying? So, outside of motherfuckers paying a nigga, like, like my, I got my first five Gs with Jack mm -hmm. at, at, at um, the Catalyst. 
it was like a show for me and Jack, and I, I was guaranteed 35 in the contract. If it sell out, I get five Gs. I think he got 10, I got five. And after that, I just never went back down under five. Right, right. And then it, after I got 10, I never went down under 10. And it, as it go up, shit like that. So, yeah. but um, like a lot of them don't understand it. Like they got, there's so many big artists out here. They got, they got touring companies that'll just be like, like that work with labels to where you, where we, where we signed you, we'll connect you with them. Like even certain artists, is like certain artists, big artists already have label deals with certain labels. So they'll sign you, like you might be signed to Atlantic, but this artist is signed to Atlantic, but you will look better with this artist. So we're going to put you with him yeah. like you signed with him. Plug, yeah. yeah. And then he's about to go on tour and we're going to put you on tour with him and he's about to drop an album and we guarantee you're going to have a feature on this yeah. album. And like they do that with beat producers too. Like yeah. we'll sign you and make sure you have a beat on this album and you're going to eat off this. You know what I'm saying? It's all different types. That's why I said it's 10% rapping and 90% business. Yeah. I got one more. Um, I think an unsung person that was a part of the Livewire outfit was Damon Jamal. He don't really get spoke about that much. Like, how mm-hmm. important was him and his I don't think Damon early? Jamal was Livewire. Oh, Damon, yeah, nah, but I'm just saying, yeah. he, he was like... The Damon Jamal, was, Damon Jamal was my cameraman. That right. was the one who told me, don't respond back to comments. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? We shared the studio downtown That's Oakland. Right, yeah. he, 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 he did decide with the... Um, with the videos, mm-hmm. and I did decide with the rapping. So when I found out he did videos, I used to be me and Stevie Joe in there. So he on the side doing whatever. I'm just late night in there, like sleeping in this motherfucker. I just have my son in there with me, all type of shit. So I'm like, you know, editing a video. I'm like, you shoot videos. I'm like, oh, like, ah, go right here, record a song. I should be here right now. Like, I'm talking about like, like back to back to where I don't even know the words yeah. type shit. Like, I'm bringing that up because I feel like Livewire set that precedent of turning out videos yeah. quickly. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that insane. Once I figured that out and 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 and, and seen because when I met him, he was working with Cass Kaiser. Mm-hmm. So once I like fucked with him and seen that he was, oh, it was over. Like I, I believe he shot that video I said that I had with, with Mess and Mitchie yeah. and um Dago. You know what I'm saying? He was shooting all my previous videos mm-hmm. and and we was like we was the team working together. Yeah. Him and his girl Tiff, like we was yeah. like, I'm talking about like I used to be in, in this studio all night, like this on the computer, eyes hurting. Like he like, bro, you need to go to sleep. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm up here promoting. I'm um uh, messaging people on MySpace, oh, sending the videos out, like trying to get the views up, all type of shit, looking at the be like, bro, you can't read the comments, bro, and get mad because like who got time to be on somebody else shit and be negative? Yeah. It can't be nobody that really has a life, for one. For two, you're going to go crazy trying to figure out who it is. And for three, <laughs> this is what comes with it. So just mm-hmm. accept it. Like, he's the one who actually, like, like told me that. Like, yeah. for me to, for me to like, you know, use that or whatever. But, yeah, we was, like, a great team. Like, he had the part where he did the videos. And I was, like, on the other side recording. You know what I'm saying? For me, going to jail and fresh out videos and coming to the studio and going through all my mail and you know what I'm saying? Damon was shooting all that shit. But then, you know, he went on to bigger and better things. He moved to L.A. Yeah. And then when he moved to L.A., I think he was doing, like, video... I mean, not videos, movies and shit. Yeah, I was dropping the movie. Yeah, I was going out there fucking with him, still trying to get videos done and shit like that. I think I shot a video with him and Trader Truth out there. I was still fucking with him or whatever, but he... You know, you, you grow. Mm-hmm. You know, you start off from where he wasn't even charging me to where I just started giving him money because I'm, like, respecting what he's doing. Like, I don't want a nigga just giving me anything, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and then I got a relationship with you, like, as into where we paying rent here together in this studio. So it's like, I know that you need money to, you know, your girl, you got your girl in here slaving you feel me? Like, yeah. Friend. You got Tiff in here slaving. Like, <laughs> Tiff really wasn't one who was editing all the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's shooting the shit, Tiff editing the shit. Editing everything. So it's like, huh, bro, like, go, go, you feel me? He go two, three hundred, whatever, to where it was two hundred a video, to it was five hundred, to it was a thousand. You get what I'm saying? But you paying for what you what you getting. I, I'd rather give a nigga, like, make sure I get what I want. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, okay, huh, how much you want? Okay, cool, make sure I get what I want, though. You get what I'm saying? I, don't, I shouldn't have no problem, no complaints. I gave you what you want. Give me what I want. You get what I'm saying? So, and, and it, it, it came from me just seeing his grind and work that did to where I'm like, huh, bro? You get what I'm saying? Huh, bro? Like, we in here really, like, grinding together, starving together, like, going downstairs, splitting a burrito type shit. You get what I'm saying? And and really, like, came up together and, yeah, and still fucked like with each other. Early yeah. days of YouTube, too, Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
And once I seen he was shooting videos, because he's showing me how many videos he had, but Kaz was never, was, was never releasing them. So he just sitting on them like, man, this dude, you feel me? He got me shooting the video, I'm gonna put them out. I'm like, man, let's shoot. Like, and once I seen that, the formula was there. Yeah, like, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, having a good cameraman on your team is but that's what I'm valuable. saying. I done went through hella cameramen that change up. Right. You get what I'm saying? And and it happens like I don't beat makers, right. you've been a, do a song with a big artist and now they didn't ask for no money for the beat. They wanna take the song down and they want five thousand for the beat down yeah, because they shit, you know what I'm happens, saying? Yeah. All that type of shit mm-hmm. from cra- crazy shit, bro. Like crazy. I done seen all type of crazy, like, damn, bro, like you just begged me to Beg me for my email to send me a beat. You never said nothing about no money. Because <laughs> yeah. now, because this shit distributed through Empire, now you want to charge Empire yeah, yeah. 5000 for a beat because it's a play. Right. Like, it's a it's a scam. It's, it's a play. Like, they they see, like, you know, like, they could have told you up front, bro, I want 500 for the beat. And pay them out and you own the beat now. Right. Instead, they're they playing on you like, I'm going to send this nigga some beats. Nigga, and I, he sent me some beats. I put a big feature on it. I want 1500 for the beat now. Huh? Like, where the fuck this come from? That's getting goofy, too, because a song like that, as a producer, you could take and just put on your resume and use that to sell hella And you can put this shit on your ASCAP or your BMI, you automatically get 50% because you're the the beat producer and make that 1500. You get what I'm saying? Instead, burn a relationship with somebody that can continue using you on more multiple albums with more bigger features. Right. You get what I'm saying? Get your name out there. So it's like like it's like burning the plug. Like I said, it's like it's like an easy come up. That's how people are looking at it. Like, you know, so with that, I just try to stay away from the people that's not genuine. You get what I'm saying? Uh, it's hard because you don't know when you meet them, but it's like I just I'm kind of I'm a great judge of character. So once I see any first sign, I'm done. Yeah, like, I'm the same way. I'm man. done. Like I don't even got time. Like one, two, three times, we're not going that yeah. far. First time, man. Listen, I'm over with. You really gotta protect your energy. Yeah, for sure. You gotta protect. Yeah, that's your how you last. Not coming that. last. You have to protect yourself. Like, because yeah. it's like everything's a come up. Yeah. Like I could leave my earring right here and forget it. And my friend, man, I just not feel too rich. I don't take his earring and try to go to World Star with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just so they can get some fucking. That's how. That's how they fuck with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's just how. The world is now. It's like they want to use anything to, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like anything. Like, motherfucker be filming you driving in the car, leaving the mall. Man, I just chased him out the mall. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, that's yeah. to get some notoriety. So it's like, motherfuckers really doing anything for that fame, bro. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The king of Oakland. For sure. I, as you said earlier, I don't think you take anything away from anybody else yeah. by using that title. No, not at all. Yeah. And, then, and then when I use these titles, if it's, the King, if it's the Sim God, if it's Sim City Money Man, if it's Neighborhood Superstar, if it's Hometown Hero, whatever it is, I'm speaking for the niggas that in their neighborhood that feel like they are the Kings or the Neighborhood Superstars or the Money Mans, whatever, that don't rap. Right. I'm not just speaking for myself. And I'm speaking for the other niggas in my neighborhood also because a lot of niggas in my neighborhood that get money that don't rap might get more money than me, whatever. But I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm Hell speaking yeah. as a whole, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, around the world. There's real niggas everywhere around the world. So I when, I, when, when I'm coming up with these titles and these names, and I'm, I'm speaking for everybody. I love it. Well, you know what? I'm the king of Frisco. For sure. What you gonna do about that? For sure. Argue about it yeah. with yourself yeah. in the comments, because I'm not gonna read them, yeah, feel? For sure. You feel me? The king of Oakland, yeah. king of Frisco. Yeah, History we got, of the we, podcast. Got, we got the title, man. Like I Come said, on, man. the King Shed of Thrones, man. We're right. shedding throne up here, right? That's man, how it you goes, know what I'm man. Saying? That's how it goes. For sure. No, but real talk though, bro. Uh, that's why I fuck with you. Motivational. Yeah. yeah. Uh, real street situations, no glorification. Like, like you gotta go raps. through something to know something. Come on, and man. That's what it is. Like it's like if you still on that after this long, like. It's like, like, nah, that shit's pointless Yeah, positive yeah, growth, bro yeah. Let's get this money Let's have this For prosperity sure. Take care of the family For sure Take care of our responsibilities Pay For these sure. bills Teach the next generation man, pay these taxes Pay these taxes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen How these niggas ain't never paid taxes Come on, before. man You ain't made enough <laughs> money Off yeah. this music to pay taxes For on sure. it, man right? You know what I'm saying? This is, a, this is a every year thing That's you know right, that's so, right I got an LLC I know yeah. how it go, man For sure So it's, 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 it's Once again, it's bigger And better things in life Than just I'm sliding on the ops Or Dropping a location, or you feel me, back doing a nigga, or you feel me, shit like that. Like I believe in karma and blessings, bro. Like I don't, I don't do bad business. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I don't fuck over niggas. I don't do shady or snake shit like that. Like 
I'm very upfront. I'm very blunt. And sometimes, like, motherfuckers can't accept that. But I'd rather a person, like, be upfront with me than lie or, you feel me, keep shit from me. I could, I could handle that better than, you feel me, shit like that. So Absolutely, bro. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing this game on the podcast. Man, thank bro. you for having me, man. I appreciate y'all. I look forward to our next conversation. For sure. If you ever need our support, just holler. It's all good. And in the meantime, y'all, thank you for supporting. Thank you for watching, subscribing, all that good shit. We got a lot of cool shit coming up. Shout out to the team. Shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to Filthy Rich, the king of Oakland. Peace. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Hell yeah. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay.